And for me, from them, my world changed. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. Now I know not everyone actually wants to get a job as a developer, and instead you would prefer to freelance full-time and just go straight from learning into freelance, which is exactly what Eddie did, which is why I decided to interview him and talk about his tips for freelance, I'm going to share some of the best tips in this video. But if you'd like to see the full interview and actually check out my complete JavaScript simplified course, which is just under 40 hours of content, everything you need to know from the absolute basics to the most advanced features of JavaScript, check that out in the description down below and use the code early and you're going to get 20% off as long as you do it within the first five or so days of this video coming out. So with that said, let's see actually how Eddie started because he had a bit of an interesting start compared to most people since he didn't actually enjoy development until he stumbled upon web development. It's just a bit of HTML and CSS, like nothing more. And I was like, wow, I actually built something and it's live on the internet for everyone else to see. And for me, from then, my world changed and it became, I don't know, such a passion, such a hobby. And then which went into work, which is great because I haven't really worked a day in my life since I started doing that. I really love this story because when Eddie first started learning programming, he actually didn't really enjoy it at all. But when he stumbled upon web development specifically, he realized how much fun programming can be, which I think is important because you need to find the thing in programming that really lights you up, whether it's game development, web development, desktop development, whatever it is, find that thing and really focus on it 100%. Now kind of going over to the freelance side of things, one thing that's really hard about freelance is landing your first few clients because you don't really have a portfolio of projects that you can show them. So Eddie has this one really cool tip he wants to share with you about how you can actually build up your portfolio without having any clients. I still didn't have enough for a portfolio, I felt, to actually reach out to local companies. So then I just made some, I suppose, fake websites. I just thought, well, if there was a gym in the area, what, what kind of website would they want? So I kind of invented you know, Gym X and then uh, put a website together for this fake gym and I added it to my portfolio. And I did one for like a hairdressers and I remember there were a few others in, in a similar sort of area. Now, once you start landing clients because of the new amazing portfolio you have, it's important to pick the right clients. And one thing that Eddie really recommends is trying to focus on smaller businesses, not only because it's easier to land a job with a smaller business because there's not as many hoops to jump through and you can really talk directly to the person owning the business, but they also can act as a huge marketing team for you. They love that so much. The following week, I got like four calls from friends of this, of this um business owner to say, I heard you did a great job. I've got some little things that need doing, but we just never get around to them. You know, could you do it? And so I quoted all of them and I think most of them came in and uh, they were so happy. Again, they, they recommended me to their uh, friends and family. So that I think the thing is a lot of these small businesses, they network with a lot of other small businesses and so they can really easily become, you know, our sales team because it's great to get a big contract for a big company but they're unlikely to recommend you to somebody else unless the person leaves that big company and goes to another company and they go, right, let's use this freelancer again because they were great. Whereas with small companies, I find that they really want to recommend you because they want to help out their friends and they feel that they're helping out their friends or colleagues or other small businesses by, by recommending a great service. Having this amazing marketing support from the businesses promoting you to other businesses is absolutely amazing because now you can actually grow naturally, organically without having to do any effort on your part marketing yourself. These people are doing the marketing for you, which is amazing. And the next thing I want to talk about is sites like Fiverr and Upwork. They get a lot of positive and negative reviews on them about, oh, it's impossible to get started there. It's a race to the bottom, blah, blah, blah. And some people are like, oh, you know, it's a great place to start. So I asked Eddie what his opinions are, and this is what he had to say. I think getting started is hardest because like I mentioned, I look at reviews. When you first go on there, you're going to have, when, you, if when people first join, you're going to have no reviews. So what I suggest to these people is put in a lower rate and pick small projects. Like you don't want to spend a year working on a lower rate. What I would recommend is pick a lower rate and do small projects that might take you one week. Then that way um, you can get that person to give you a review. You can do a great job and you might have to do that for a few months, six months or, or however long until you've got kind of, you know, 10, 20 re good reviews and then you can increase your price slowly and then in keep increasing keep increasing it i thought this point was amazing just do a few smaller projects at a lower budget just so you can build up that review and trust on the platform and then once you have that you can start to raise your price and then instead of racing to the bottom where you're trying to get the lowest and cheapest and quickest price you're instead trying to get to quality so here's my point on why it's important to go for quality instead of quantity as your reviews start to grow you can start to raise your price and then instead of racing to the bottom you're really trying to compete with quality and I feel like that's what a lot of people don't realize, that there is a race to the bottom in a sorts on these sites, 
But if you kind of elevate yourself above that and you try to do quality as opposed to quantity and pricing, you're gonna set yourself on a whole different playing field that has a lot less competition because there's so many people competing for the lowest price that you really can't win that battle unless you have like a huge corporation pumping out content at you know a ridiculous pace. But if you get enough of those reviews and start to get that higher quality, you can really compete on a quality level and there's much less competition. And if you are good, and you don't even have to be like an expert, you just have to be better than average. That's all it takes. If you are that, then you're going to definitely be able to exceed. Now I know getting started in freelancing is not easy, but hopefully these tips and tricks are able to help you land your first few clients, build up some reviews, and able to support yourself full-time doing freelancing. And if you wanna take your JavaScript skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out my JavaScript Simplified course, linked down in the description below. And if you use the code early, you're gonna get 20% off the course, as long as you use it within the next couple of days. And this course covers everything you need to know about JavaScript and also has the entire full interview that I had with Eddie on there. So it's going to be amazing for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.